Hello and welcome to HTB. My name is Jess. And my name is Tom. Great to be with you. So great to be with you. And if it is your first time joining us, then we would love to encourage you to scan this QR code that will pop up on the screen. Or alternatively, you can head to htb.org forward slash welcome. And there's a short form there that you can fill in to tell us a little bit about yourself and someone from the team will be in contact. Yeah, I'll be in contact with you soon. And if you'd like to access this service in BSL, British Sign Language, head to the website HDB dot org forward slash live stream and you'll head through to a zoom call where bsl team are waiting for you there and um we'd also love to encourage you to say hello in the chat and if you don't know who to say hello to look for the name with the spanner next to it there's a lot of us there and um it's like we can say hello back we're it's ready, kind of why we're, we're there ready we're ready chat. so say hello in the chat <laughs> and of course if at any point you'd like prayer do head to the website hdb.org forward slash live stream prayer all of these links are in the description of the video and also on the chat to just click through. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to head into the service right now. Good morning to you. Welcome to HTB today. Well, well a very warm welcome to everyone in the room and welcome to everyone watching online. We're so glad that you could join us uh, today for our service. Uh, lots of exciting things coming up later in the service, which I'll tell you about a little bit later. But we're going to begin our service in a time of worship. Would you like to stand? Um, let's pray as we begin our service. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for all that you did last weekend at Focus. And we thank you that the same Jesus who was there with us is with us today. Lord, we pray you'd come and meet with us. We pray you'd open our hearts and minds that we might see a little bit more of you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. I just thought um, before we start to sing songs, I'm just going to read a verse of scripture just to get our minds aligned to who we are here to worship this morning. And it's from Psalms 103, and it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. So can we say that together? Let all that I am praise the Lord. One more time. Let all that I am Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. It's blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Glorious 
Cause every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to pray When the darkness closes in Lord, still I will It's every blessing you It's every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to pray When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glory. Oh, blessed be the name of the Just take the next moment and pour out your thanksgiving to the Lord. Every blessing he pours out, can we just turn it all back to praise? In whatever way, whatever language you can, just say, Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord, we love you. We give you praise. We lift you high above every other name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the name of the Lord for every circumstance on the road marked with suffering blessed be your name when there is pain in the offering blessed be your name when i have when i don't have blessed be your name so every blessing you pour out i turn back to pray it's every blessing you pour out i Turn back oh, yeah. When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say it's Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the glory of Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when
Yes, it's running after me Thank you, Lord Your goodness is running after me Day after day Every single moment Yes, it's running after me Yes, Lord, we thank you for your promise That surely goodness and mercy will follow us All the days of our lives And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever it's running after me thank you for your kindness for your compassion lord it's running after me oh cause all my life you have been faithful cause all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am in, as I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, all my life, yes, all my life, you have been there. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in, oh, I will say of the goodness of God. Yes, I will say, oh, I will say of the goodness of God. Oh, I will say of the goodness of God. So we give you. Oh, the glory we worship you, our Lord. Yes, you are worthy to be praised for your goodness and your love towards us. We give you all the glory. Yes, we give you all the, all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be. Come on, make that your song this morning. We give you all the glory as we give you up his name in this room this morning. He is worthy of all of our worship. It's his breath in our lungs. He gives us life. He provides our needs. He is worthy. Even when we're unfaithful, he remains faithful. When someone needs to lift up their voices and exalt him this morning, he is worthy of all of our praises. Lift up your sound this morning. He is worthy. Exalt his name in the room this morning. This is your moment to just have a one-on-one -on -one with your heavenly father this morning. Lord, you are worthy. We exalt you. There is none like you. None can compare to you, Lord. Nothing can compare to the promise that we have in you. You are worthy, O Lord. Why don't we together lift up our own personal cries of praise together? Why don't we raise this roof and lift the name of Jesus high. Lord Jesus, we thank you, we worship you, we glorify you. It is all 
all about you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are and all you do. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are powerful. You are all powerful, yet you are intimate and you draw close to us today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are strong, that all strength is yours, yet you are kind and gracious to us as you draw close to us. Lord Jesus, thank you that all wisdom is yours, all knowledge is yours, and yet you speak to us, you encourage us, you lift us up. And our prayer is that you would continue to do that to every single one of us today. Would we meet with you and hear from you in Jesus' name, amen. Would you like to take a seat? And let's continue in prayer. Uh, Father, we continue to pray for our world this morning, and we lift up to you the particular places that need you right now. We think particularly of Ukraine. We think of uh, Taiwan and China. And there'll be particular places for each of us. And Lord, we lift up to you those nations that are on our hearts right now, and we pray for peace. We pray you'd bring your peace with justice, that you would reign. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you would give wisdom and guidance. And particularly for our own nation, we pray for the next leader of our country. Lord, would you be preparing that person? Would you be filling them with your godly wisdom, guiding them uh, for the future of this nation. And we also, we turn our prayers to our community, our church community, and we thank you, Lord, so much for all that you did last weekend at Focus. We thank you for the amazing opportunity we had to gather together, to be together, to pray together, to worship together, to have fun together. We thank you for all that you did. And particularly, we thank you for what you did in our young people, our children, our youth, um, and our young adults, thank you that you met with them, that you encouraged them, and we pray that for all of us, you'd carry all that you did into this year ahead. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A very, very warm welcome to you again. Uh, it's wonderful, particularly if you're joining us um, for the first time or visiting. We're so glad you're here. If you're watching online, a very warm welcome to you, and especially if you're watching for the first time, we're so glad uh, that you've joined us. We want to say thank you for all the ways in which you play a part in the vision here at HTB. Thank you so much for your praying, your serving, and your giving. Um, nothing here would happen without all three of those things. And we have an opportunity over the summer to pray together, to worship together um, at summer nights. And we'd love to invite you this Tuesday right here in the church. Um, if you're watching online, please do come in. Come in person. We'd love to see you here for summer nights. It's going to be an amazing opportunity um, to be together over the summer. And that's going to continue every Tuesday throughout August. Thank you also for your serving. I know that so many of you do so much to make everything happen here at HTB. And our teams are getting prepared um, for the autumn and we'd love you to be involved. There are lots of ways you can get involved either through the website or the team at the back. would love to just find out a bit about you, know what your skills and gifts are and how you could use them in the church. But one of the ways that all of us um, can play a part in serving um, is on the 1st of September, we are going to be gathering together to, as a church to welcome um, our new vicar, Archie Coates, and his wife, Sam, uh, for Archie's licensing. It's going to be from 6.30 on the 1st of September. And we'd love everyone to be there to give them such a warm welcome and to pray for them um, for all that God is going to do in this season ahead. So we'd love to see you there. So thank you for your praying, your serving, and also thank you for your giving. Um, everything that happens here can only happen because of your giving. And there are so many different ways that you can give. Uh, in a moment, the buckets are going to come and be passed around. There's also um, envelopes in the back of the chairs. There's a QR code on the screen. So many different ways um, that you can play a part by giving. So as we take up our offering, I'd love us just to look um, a little glimpse of some of the things that happened last weekend at Focus 2022. Have a look at this.
Yes, wasn't it an amazing weekend? Well, if you can't wait to get back to Focus or if you missed out and um, missed out on this year, you can book on already for Focus 2023. Um, and we would love to um, get everyone, anyone who missed out, everyone who wants to be there again, you are all invited. We can't wait to be back together again next summer. Our speaker today is Fernando Carrillo. Fernando will be well known to um, many of you here. Fernando um, is a key part of these morning services. Fernando really runs everything that happens on a Sunday. He runs all our teams. Um, uh, Fernando is really involved in Alpha. I always joke that Fernando has the biggest Alpha group every single time there is Alpha because he has, he, he's just so good at inviting people. He has so many friends. Um, Fernando's also involved in coaching um, young leaders, and he really is such a, a gift to our church. He's also a very dear friend. So please, would you join me in welcoming Fernando Carrillo? Good morning, everyone. First of all, how's everyone doing after focus? Have you guys recovered yet? No? Well, it is so good to see so many of you today, this morning. Everyone's, everyone has their Sunday best on. And I know that during focus, early mornings, late nights, but it was so much fun getting to serve alongside so many of you, having breakfast together, doing barbecues together. And if you missed this year, you definitely, definitely want to come next year. Focus is incredible. One of the things that I love about Focus, though, is that it tells us that Archie always says, they always say that we're actually a family on a mission. That's what I love about Focus. But a family on a mission, I, I keep thinking, I was thinking, well, if we're all on a mission together, what's the individual mission that God has for me? What's the individual mission that God has for you? What's the adventure that God wants to take you on. I was talking to somebody over Focus and they were telling me about their story. They, they lived an incredible life. They, 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 li they had an incredible adventure of God transforming their life. And, and then I, I realized actually that this August, um, it's my 12th birthday. My 12th birthday from coming out of a drug rehabilitation center that I was in when I was 19. And... Um, Oh, no, no. I, I, I just realized that just now, uh, as we were singing, the Lord reminded me of that, of that, of me speaking to this person at Focus and, and talking about adventures. And, and today, what I want to speak to you today about is why you should take the adventure of a lifetime with Jesus. Did you know that your life has purpose? Did you know that your life has meaning? Did you know that you were created by God in a specific way to accomplish a specific task? Did you know that your life could impact the world for good? In today's passage, we're going to see when Jesus calls one of his first disciples, Simon Peter. And we're going to read from Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And, and we're going to see how Jesus calls Simon Peter to take the adventure of a lifetime. And we're going to see how Jesus calls you and I to take the adventure of a lifetime. So if you've got your Bibles there with you, let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And we read, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had got out of them and were washing their nets, Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And when they had filled both boats, so they began to sink. But, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee. 
who were partners of Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. From these passages, we're going to see three reasons why Peter joined Jesus on the adventure of a lifetime, but why you can join Jesus on the adventure of a lifetime. The first point is that Jesus believes in you. From those verses, Jesus had told Peter, cast your nets out, but they had caught nothing. So Peter says, Master, we told all night, we caught nothing. And then he says, when he realizes who Jesus is, he says, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. You see, Jesus finds Peter here in a moment of failure. Peter was a fisherman. He, this was his profession. He was an expert. But today, he failed. There was no income for that day. His family wouldn't be fed. They'd completely given up. They were washing their nets. And this is such a laborious task that you definitely don't want to do it twice in one night, especially if you had caught nothing. Peter also later we found out was, was somebody who, who was a little bit difficult to be around, let's say. He was somebody who was outspoken. One time, he rebuked Jesus. Imagine that. He told God off. Um, one time, some of you are like, what's wrong with that? Uh, outspoken. So, so, some, he, Peter was also aggressive. One time, he cut off a soldier's ear. He was fearful. He, he even denied Jesus after promising never to do it. And here, he meets Jesus. And the only thing he can do is fall at his feet aware of his failures, aware of his faults. But Jesus has a different plan for him. On the cross, Jesus would pay for all of Peter's sins. On the cross, Jesus would pay for all of my sins. On the cross, Jesus would pay for all of your sins, for all our mistakes, so that we would be wiped clean. And here, Jesus looks at Peter, and he doesn't see his failures, he doesn't see his mistakes, he doesn't see his faults. Jesus sees Peter for who he would become with Christ in him. Jesus believes in Peter before Peter believes in Jesus. I love how the Apostle John puts it. He says this, we love because he first loved us. And you may be here today and you may feel like God could never use you because you failed. You may be here today and you might be so tired because you've caught nothing. You've tried time and time again and you've come back empty. Business has failed. Relationships has failed. Being an adult in general has failed. Parenting has failed. Work has failed. And you just think, God could never use me. But Jesus comes up to Peter in a moment of his, of his failures and says, throw your nets out one more time with me in your boat. You see, Jesus is the God of second, third, fourth, fifth, and even a million chances. Jesus believed in Peter, but Jesus also believes in you. No matter how you've come here today, God loves you. He sees you. He has a plan for your life and he knows who you will become when you put your trust in him completely. I grew up in an environment when people didn't really believe in me. I was born in a prison. Both my parents were drug addicts and my family was broken um, to say the least. I had words spoken over me my whole childhood which scarred me for so many years. I, I spent many years in counseling healing almost over the words that were spoken over me. I was told that I wasn't good enough, that I'd never amount to anything, that it was my fault for the failures of my parents and my family. I grew up believing I had no purpose. I grew up believing that I had no reason for living. And it was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. I got so heavily involved in drugs in my teenage years. I left school with no GCSEs and I would take so many drugs that I would fall unconscious. So many of my friends died or went to prison. 
And I remember in the peak of that mess, I remember staying up for five days at a time, sleeping one day, five days at a time without eating or sleeping. And, and I would never say this out loud, but to a certain degree, I, I realized that I almost didn't care if I lived or died anymore. But Jesus came to find me when I had failed at everything. Jesus found me in this drug den in South London and, and he loved me before I could love him. Jesus decided to believe in me before I, I could believe in him. And Jesus started to take me on the adventure of a lifetime. Jesus put people around me that painted a picture of what it was like for God to believe in me. One of those people was a man called Tim Fielder. He's a few years older than me. He's a Welsh rugby player. He's the son of a pastor. And he was the first Christian friend I ever had. And he really took me under his wings. I, I became his friend just after I left rehab. I went to this church and he was one of the leaders there. And I don't know what, why he did this, but he just decided to believe in me. He, he would speak life over me. He'd call me a leader before I'd ever led anything. He called me a pastor before I ever led a Bible study. He called me a good man. He said I'd be a good father. He taught me how to read the Bible. He taught me how to teach the Bible. He taught me which sermons to listen to. He, he even one time took me to his house in Wales and, and I got to see where he grew up. And he told me a story of how his father would at dinner spend time with his his children and his wife and ask them how their day went and pray for each one of them. And, and I realized then that that's what I wanted more than anything in this world. And Tim taught me what it meant to be a man, what it meant to have a family. At one point when I was really tempted, Tim even moved in with me for, for about two months. And, and at night when I'd really feel tempted to, to go back, um, we'd go for a late night run. We, we'd come home, have Cheerios, and um, we'd watch sermons, and he would just love me and pray for me and, and be there for me. And Tim was also really hench and massive. He went to the gym, and he taught me how to go to the gym, which was also a bonus. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Tim. I wouldn't be here speaking to all of you today if Tim hadn't believed in me. But Tim was just a an earthly picture of what it was like for Jesus to ultimately believe in me. Jesus' belief in me is far greater than Tim's belief in me and Jesus' belief in you is far greater than your belief in yourself. Jesus loves you so much. He has a plan for your life and Jesus doesn't give up believing in you. No matter how you feel, no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter what your life may look like today. Jesus believes in you. Every time that you hear a voice that will tell you that you failed or that you're not good, good enough or that you're disqualified, just refuse to accept it. Remind yourself of the truth. Jesus believes in me. I love this verse that St. Paul wrote to the letter, in the letter to the Colossians. He says, Christ in you the hope of glory. As long as you live, Christ lives in you. And as long as Christ lives in you, there is hope. There is hope for you because Jesus believes in you. So the first reason why you should take the adventure of a lifetime is because Jesus believes in you. Your failures don't define you. The second reason is that Jesus has more for you. The verse reads, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Peter was a lifelong fisherman. His friends were fishermen. He had fished in this lake, in this sea, his whole life. He knew exactly the perfect location where to fish. He knew which bait to use. He knew which time to go out. He had all the knowledge in the world to catch fish. But he still caught nothing. For Jesus to tell him to go out and cast him net, his nets out one more time would have been crazy. He'd already finished. He just wanted to go to bed. And so often God calls us to take steps of faith that don't make sense to us. So often God calls us to trust in him 
and not in our own ability. So often God calls us to do things that push us outside of our safety, that don't make us feel comfortable. But when we take a step of faith, he always provides. He has more for you than you could ever imagine. A life verse for me has always been Ephesians 3.20, which reads, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Immeasurably more than you could ever imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Throughout the Gospels, when Jesus provides a miracle, there's always overflow. Twelve basketfuls left over. Everybody was fed and then some. Everybody was healed. Jesus has more for you than you could ever dream of. I wish Jesus was there when we were praying for catered camping in the evening. Maybe we would have had a multiplication of food. <laughs> and this is what happens. Sometimes we have our natural capability and our, our, our ability, which there's always a ceiling to it. This is our ability. I hope you can see my writing. Our ability has a roof. Well, this is my ability. Some of you are, look, a lot, look a lot smarter than me, so maybe your ability is up to here. Um, but no matter how, how clever we are, how strong we are, how much we know, how much experience we have, there's always going to be a roof to our ability, to our natural ability. But what God calls us into is to step into God's ability, His supernatural ability for your life and my life. God's ability is here. And for us to go from our ability to God's ability, all we need is faith. God calls us time and time again to take a step of faith, to walk into His supernatural ability for our lives. Ultimately, what this meant for Peter was that he became a disciple. He became an apostle. He saw people's lives changed. He wrote books of the Bible. But also for Peter, it meant that he was martyred for his faith. And following Jesus, even though he has more for us, it's a life of sacrifice. It's a life where Peter ultimately was crucified upside down for his faith. And all of us will carry a cross to follow Jesus. But Jesus says, Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This humble Galilean fisherman, Peter, is still being spoken about 2,000 years after his death in South Kensington, London. Jesus had more for him, but Jesus has more for you too. One of the people who most inspires me and challenges me is, uh, is Jackie Pullinger. She took the, walk, the call of God on her life seriously. At the age of 22, in 1966, she got on a ship to Hong Kong on a simple word that she received from God in a prayer meeting. She began working in the walled city, which was the largest opium producer of the world at that time because it was completely unpoliced. She didn't speak the language. She didn't have any money. She didn't even have any friends there. She left her tidy, comfortable home here in London and took the adventure of a lifetime that was waiting for her. And God had so much more in store for Jackie Pillager than she could ever imagine. He began to use her to minister to gangsters and heroin addicts in the walled city. She would pray for heroin addicts. They'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in an instant, they'll be set free from heroin addiction. She saw thousands of lives changed. She built rehabilitation homes throughout Hong Kong under the charity St. Stephen's Society. And until today, she still ministers there, seeing thousands of lives changed. She took the adventure of a lifetime and she's still on it. But what may God be calling you to do today? That doesn't make sense. Dr. Anthony Campolo did a study of 50 people over the age of 95 who were asked one question. If you could live your life over again, what's one thing you'd do differently? 
And three answers dominated the study. They were, I would reflect more, I would risk more, and I would do more things that live on after I am dead. What could you do with your life? What is holding you back? Jesus has so much more for you. Will you trust him? Because as I've been speaking, God may have been reminding you of a, of a dream you once had, of a business you wanted to start, of a profession you wanted to undertake, of a charity you thought may needed to have been formed, of a connect group you may have wanted to lead, of a team you wanted to join, of someone you needed to forgive, of a conversation you need to have. Well, perhaps today's the day. Perhaps today's the day you take the adventure of a lifetime because Jesus believes in you. Jesus has more for you. But also, Jesus is calling you. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The final reason you should take the adventure of a lifetime is because Jesus himself is calling you to do it. Jesus knew that Peter would have to leave everything behind to be fully committed to the adventure that Jesus had in store for him. And of course, it would have been scary for Peter to leave his job, his friends, everything he knew. That's why Jesus says, don't be afraid. It's countercultural for us to leave safety and step into the unknown. And the things that Peter had to leave behind, they aren't necessarily bad things. Money's not a bad thing. A job's not a bad thing. A house is not a bad thing. A family's not a bad thing. Those are all great things. They only become difficult things if they get in the way of our ability to follow Jesus with all our hearts. And sometimes, if we hold on to our past, we're not able to step into our calling. We're not able to step into the more that God has for us. Jesus says this in Mark 2.22, no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. Is there something in your life or someone in your life that might be holding you back from stepping into the adventure that God has in store for you. Some years ago, I was in a relationship that, that wasn't bringing honor to God. I was living in sin and we loved each other. We wanted to get married, but we were not wise with the decisions that we were making. And it felt like our relationship with God was suffering. A wise mentor told me that marriage wouldn't be the best thing because of the complexities of our relationship. And, and I was completely to blame. Thinking about having to leave that relationship was so difficult for me because it was everything that I ever wanted. It was the possibility of a wife, the possibility of a family, the possibility for me to be able to build everything I didn't have. But I just felt, and I heard a subtle voice that, that told me that I'd have to let go of, of the past if I wanted to step into everything that God had in store for me. And it was so, so hard. One of the hardest decisions of my life. But as I was able eventually to, to step out of the relationship and, and I was holding on to Jesus with everything I had, I saw Jesus heal my heart, put people around me to support me and love me. And he's taken me on the adventure of a lifetime that I know that I wouldn't be here today if I kept holding on to the past. And I wanna ask you the question, what may God be calling you to leave behind? Sometimes there are things that 
make us feel comfortable, things that make us feel safe, things that we hold on to, and they almost become like a lifeline for us. But God wants us to leave all those things behind and follow him with all our hearts. So many of, often we're prepared to give Jesus our boat, we're prepared to give Jesus our nets, we're prepared to even give Jesus our time and our money. But Jesus is calling us to be prepared to leave everything behind to follow him. I want to encourage you today to take the adventure of a lifetime because Jesus believes in you. No matter if you failed, no matter how you've come here today, Jesus believes in you. There is hope for you. Jesus has more for you, immeasurably more than, it, than you could ever dream of or even imagine. All you need to do is take a step of faith and trust him. And Jesus is calling you. You're in safe hands. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. If you let something go, you'll be safe in his hands. Because imagine the impact you could have in the world. Imagine if you chose today to take the adventure of a lifetime with Jesus. Imagine the lives that would be changed. The world will look different as a result of the decisions that you make. The world will look different as a result of your ability to say, Jesus, I leave everything behind and I choose to follow you. Take me on the adventure of a lifetime. Shall we pray? Let's stand. How I, I, I just really sense that the Lord wants to give people a gift today. And, and often how I like to, to pray, often if, if, if you feel comfortable, just to extend your hands out, just like this. And, and I like to just close my eyes just to be able to, to, to center myself on, on what the Lord might be saying to me. And if you're watching online, you can do that too. The Lord has a gift for you too. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're already here. And we just ask you to come and rest on us. And as the Spirit's resting on you, he might just be just reminding you of, he might be giving you a verse or a picture. He might just be reminding you of, of a dream you had, of an adventure you wanted to take, something you wanted to start. He might be just placing that on your heart right now, reminding you of it. He might just be giving you a, just a peace, a warmth on your hands. I just see the Spirit just resting on so many people just across the room right now. One of the things I feel like the, the Spirit wants to do today is he, he wants to give us the faith to, um, to throw our nets out with Jesus in our boat. 
And I believe that the, Lord, the, the Spirit has just been given, just been reminding you of the adventure that he may have for you. And I believe that today great things are gonna start. So if you're here today and, and you've been sensing just the Spirit just resting on you, reminding you of an adventure, reminding you of a dream, reminding you of a business, reminding you of, a, of something, and you just feel like, Lord, I want to, will you just make your way to the front? Because the team are here and, and we just love to pray for you. Just start making your way to the front. If you're at the, in the balconies, just make your way to the front because we would love to pray for you because we're believing that the Spirit's gonna p- begin to just almost supernaturally give strength and, and faith for those things. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. And we just pray for people who are online. We pray for those adventures. We pray for faith to be stirred in their hearts, for courage and strength. We pray for, I wonder if there's somebody here who, who has a business that they've been wanting to start and they've been wanting, it, wanting to use it for, for good. Uh, but, but you've just be, be, been worried, been afraid of, of the strategy, haven't known how, where to start. If that's you, would you mind just making your way to the front? Because we would just love to pray for you. I also believe just, just in Jackie, I've just been reminding of this um, verse, um, of this story from Jackie Pullinger, that maybe God, God has placed on your heart a specific people group in some part of the world. Um, and, and for some of you, it might be overseas, but for some of you, it might be people here in the UK who, who, are, who are marginalized. And you just sense a call to them, but you... you you, 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 you may be afraid of like leaving your job or, or leaving the security of what you know. I just feel like God wants, we just wanna pray for you because God wants to bless you and bless those endeavors. Would you mind just making your way to the front so we could just pray for you? We also just had this word earlier um, that, 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 for, that there may be somebody here who, who God's given you the gift of, of abundance with finances. He's provided with you so much. And you've been thinking about where, how to best use what God has given you. And, and I just really sense so strongly that the, the Lord wanted to say to you that he, He's proud of your hand. He's proud of the generosity that you've already shown. And he, he wants to multiply everything He's given to you. There's that verse that says, whoever has more will be given. And, and I sense if that's you, if, you be, if you're here, don't worry, we won't highlight you. <laughs> um, but if you're, unless you want to be highlighted, no. If you're here and you've been blessed by that, but you're thinking, oh, how can I best utilize what the Lord has given me? Would you come to the front? Because we really want to just pray for you. Yeah, and if you're here and you're in a connect group, if you're a connect group leader, would you mind making your way to the front? If you're on the team at Focus in, in, in our marquee, come forward and just come and lay a hand on people because the Lord's really at work in people's hearts. Lord, we just thank you so much for all you're doing. We thank you, Father, for the way you've provided. Um, and for some of you, you may already have that, that dream, that adventure on your heart. You know what it is that the Lord is calling you to do, but it's like you feel afraid. You feel like you feel scared of letting go of everything you've ever known. Or, or there may be a, somebody in your life who's, who's not helping you draw closer to the Lord. Instead, they're pulling you away from the Lord and, and you're fearful of letting that go. We would love to pray for you today for, God, for you to step into God's ability, not your ability to walk in what He has for you. If that's you, would you mind just coming to the front because we just love to pray for you. And, and there's plenty of time to, to pray. Um, so don't worry, everyone's gonna be prayed for. Everyone's gonna be blessed today. Holy Spirit, come. We just pray for more of you, Holy Spirit. More of you, Lord. More of you. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. 
more of you, Lord, more of your spirit, Lord, more of your spirit. I was reading this morning in the book of Matthew when Jesus went out preaching and teaching. They brought to him all who were lame and sick. And the Bible says that he healed them all. If you're here today and you have any sickness in your body at all, we believe that God wants to bring complete healing. I, I'm believing for, for complete healing of the eyes for 2020 vision. Um, if you've had a diagnosis um, that, that the doctors have said it's impossible to be healed, would you mind making your way forward? Because we'd love to just pray for that. If you have any sickness at all, though, please make your way forward because we would love to just pray for you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We just ask for more, 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 more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you, more of you. More of you, more of you, Lord. Mm. Yeah, more of you. Yeah, yeah, more of you, Lord. And Jesus calls all of us to, to an adventure of a lifetime, and but one of the the greatest adventures that Jesus calls us to is, is to an adventure to follow Him, an adventure to, to make Him the Lord and Savior of our lives. And you might be here today because somebody dragged you, <laughs> because somebody um, like somehow got you here, and, but you are here and God had a plan for you to be here. And you might be watching online because somebody's just put it on or you may be asking, questions about life and I want to let you know that Jesus loves you he has a plan for you he died on the cross for you and the greatest adventure that we could all ever take is the adventure of asking him to come into our life if you're here today and, and you're not sure if you've ever asked Jesus to come into your life and you're not sure if you've ever asked him to forgive you you're not sure if you've ever fully committed to Jesus but you want to commit today Today's the perfect day to take the adventure of a lifetime. And I would love to just pray with you if that's you. So if you're here and you say, you know what, on the 7th of August, I wanna commit my life to Jesus for real. Would you mind just raising your hand? Great, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all those people who have raised their hands. I, 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 and for those who, who have raised their hands, great. Just repeat this prayer after me, just in the quiet of your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I'm sorry for my sin and the mistakes I've made. I ask you to forgive me. Please, will you fill me with your Holy Spirit? In Jesus' name. And if you've prayed that prayer, you can be sure that you're about to go on the adventure of a lifetime with Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we ask for more of you over every person here. More of your spirit. More of you. More of you. More of you. So as we continue to worship, if any of the words apply to you, please feel free to come down. We would love to, to pray with you. Oh my, that the highest high will welcome. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Who the sun sets free, always free. 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for how good it is to be together, how good it is to be in unity, how good it is to be brothers and sisters together, united by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all that you've been doing amongst us and in us, and we pray you would continue it this week. And we're going to close our service with a prayer of blessing. This is a, a prayer of power. It's a prayer that we might be we might, we might know the fullness of the power of God in our lives, in our families, in our friendships, in our workplaces, in these new adventures that we begin from today, that we might know the fullness of God's blessing. So the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The blessing of God the Father, the Father who sees you and knows you and loves you. The blessing of the Son, the Son who died on the cross, who washes our past away, who makes us clean, who gives us hope and new life for the future. And the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who fills us and empowers us and strengthens us and is with us closer than anyone else. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.